Well, everybody, welcome to the show. Matt King, man, it's a pleasure to have you on, man. I'm a big fan of your work. Big fan. Thank you very much. Everything you're doing. How are you, man? I'm all right. Doing the thing. I actually spent, God, way too many hours last night. I started up a new Twitch channel called Matt's Gonna Play, and I've been uh, playing fans of Mortal Kombat. Uh, <laughs> oh, nice. MK1. Awesome. So it was, it was, so I just got my butt handed to me. And my old, like, 16 <laughs> year old self came out and just ate my face. And I was just like, till midnight, just going, like, one more round, one more. I saw you playing with Alistair Duncan, a friend of the show, yeah, had on. That was a bit of fun playing God of that's War. Great. That's great. He's a, he is a good egg. He's a great human being. And, and he had never touched a, a video game before. So it was really <laughs> good to watch him just absolutely flail. Uh, at uh at god of war where he's just like walking into a wall it's fantastic but alistair's been a friend for a long time i hired him uh for a project oh. that i did uh what do i want to say 10 years ago um oh, wow. and I, and I uh, uh i found him back then and then was enamored of his work so i've been a fan of his for years man we could talk all day about the roles you've been in, in gaming before we get into mk i just quickly want to touch on cyberpunk with the new release of that coming out, update 2.0, how, how do you yes. look back on all of that? I mean, it's in a great state now, the game. I'm um, really looking forward to to the DLC coming up. But how do you look back on that whole experience? Because that was a hell of a character you got to play, Kerry. Loved Kerry that. was wonderful and probably one of the most... I walked into that audition uh, and I said, you know, because they they give me the sides. And, and it was very ambiguous, but I played the tabletop game to death. So I knew everything that they were talking about. They were like, there was like none of it that you could fool me. So I was basically saying, you know, it, it, I walked in the door and I said, look, I don't care if I get to play little girl number four, but I'm in this game. <laughs> and uh, and they were like, what are you talking about? And I was like, I'm, I'm in the game. And they were like, I know. I was like, I know it's cyberpunk. Like, really? Well, let us tell you about the game. And I went, no, no, no. Let me tell you about the game. This is what I oh, think. It's them. This is who it's, I literally <laughs> went, you know, I think it's based on the end of the first book in Cyberpunk wow. 2020. This is what Pondsmith said here. And I just listed it down. And they that's went, surreal they to went, be a part yeah, of Yeah, that's it. exactly what it is. And then I did wow. did my version of Carrie, um, sort of my, uh, which is sort of my ode to Tom Waite. And, um, and uh, it, it, it really went over well. And to play the first, you know, really romanceable gay character within a video game was, was also a, a wonderful compliment. And in the months and years since then, it's been wonderful because there's been a lot of fan outreach um, yeah. because of it. And, and especially on Cameo where people are like, can you give me some encouragement? And that's, that you know, it's not... A, you know, what's, what's amazing is not being asked to, to say happy birthday, but being asked to really, you know, just yeah. care about somebody. And it's like, absolutely, I can do that. Yeah, that was amazing, Rob, man. I just wanted to touch on that. And then obviously, Liu Kang. Uh, is it true that, you know, Bruce Lee was a bit of an influence for this guy? Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, you, if you hear it in the original, and I was OG Gamer, you can hear the original voice actor doing of Bruce Lee Ode. And I just looked at the entire compendium of people who had done it before me. And I went, why is it my Bruce? And so I did my own version of what I thought, because Bruce died at 32, he was still a very young man. And, and, and Luke Kang's older than that. And so, you know, I was like, what would Bruce at 40 have been like if he was doing, you know, if, if he was, if he was doing this role. And so that was my sort of way, way in. What was so great last night, was how many people were playing Liu Kang? I never him. saw a Sub Zero or or um, or a Scorpion. I felt like that was amazing because like they're always the ones that everybody plays. And it, no, excuse me, there were there was two people who played Scorpion. Only one played him well. But I mean that that's amazing. <laughs> the fact that that you know that 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 the majority of the people who were playing um, iconic characters or playing Liu Kang, I was like, because he's always been the sort of second tier dude. And the fact that now he's fire god Liu Kang well, has the, the best fatality of anybody. Oh, that, that you mean the one 
uh, the black hole. The black hole. Oh man, that is it's so the cool. coolest fatality. <laughs> when did you see that? Did you see that once they revealed it? Oh, I did it to like four people last night. <laughs> it was like. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm casting you into a black hole. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it helps that he's such a great, uh, he's got such a cool move set in this game as well. Yeah, and he's yeah, been given. They really did. They changed it. They made that he's cooler. He's, he's, he, he, yeah. they upgraded his cool ball in, in a really big way. Was that the approach that you did with Dom and to, to make this guy an absolute badass? Cause he really, this is the, I think this is the best version of we've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Dom found me uh, because I did Injustice 2 and really liked what I did with Ryan Choi and um, The Atom. And that was one of, you know, and actually, like, The Atom was my favorite character to play in that game. Um, apart, just because he had the, the throw where you went in somebody's ear. Yeah. And like, um, <laughs> that was cool. Um, but uh, I just love love that concept. And when he called me in to play Liu Kang, I was like, no. So yeah, like okay, great. I got tons of places that I want to take this character. Um, but I think he uh really had a sense of where where they're you know, him him and Ed really had a sense of where they wanted to take the character already, you know. So I'm just I'm just riding the wave. And uh how does this feel, man? That's pretty cool. How does this That's feel pretty cool? Come on, that's pretty damn cool, right? Man, I, I I can't even imagine well, he's that. the god of the universe. When they were they because they did not tell me that they were resetting to one, so oh, I knew right. that they were you know, I was like, okay, it is what it is. I knew that that I was going to be the god of the universe, I did not know that that we were resetting to one. And that was, I was like, you got me kidding. <laughs> that was like when I saw that that trailer come in, I was like, oh, yes, that this is on like Donkey Kong. So, what were the sort of beats you were trying to hit with the character? for for the whole story what were you it's more to me when i when i write um and when i when i direct i try to find something that's about relationship because we change who we are in relation to everybody we interact with and you know you act differently for towards your mother than you do towards your best friend you know even if you're the same person right so one of the things is that here's a guy who now has you know in in mk11 I sort of established all these relationships. Then they make him the God of the universe, at the end of it. And it was like, okay, well now how does the guy who's the most benevolent spirit in the whole of the thing, how does he feel about everything? That's why I think it's hilarious that Johnny Cage is back to being original Johnny Cage, you know, because Liu Kang was like God of the universe. <laughs> um, but Johnny Cage is an asshole, right? <laughs> <That's just laughs> he just goes, yeah, but yeah. it's like his opinion of Johnny just doesn't change. He's like, yeah, he doesn't change. So I'm going to leave him where he was. <laughs> like all of the maturity that he's gained over multiple games. Nope. Mm -mm. No, Man, it, it must be a pinch yourself moment to be, you know, a lead in a, in a franchise this, with this well, amount of magnitude. I, mean, I was Illidan in, in World of Warcraft and stuff like that. In, in excuse me, in Warcraft 3. And then I they know, asked I me know. to World of Warcraft, and there was this like big, you know, kerfuffle over it. There's been a couple of times where well, they didn't pay you correctly, right? Is that the story oh, no, I remember? They didn't. No. They yeah, didn't. I, that that kind of pissed me off. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Well, it was just that 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 Blizzard wasn't a union gig at that point in time. Right. So they're they better now, aren't they? The job, and you know, mm. they said we'll we'll pay you, you know, six hundred dollars, and then <laughs> we'll go use your voice to make two point some billion. Um. <laughs> and uh, you'd be happy with it okay i mean it's it, it, that's why whenever we strike i'm always like you know well, it's personal to you as well box office than will smith by volume but it's like yeah. i haven't seen dollar one of it you know and it's very difficult unless you're unless you're a nolan north or or someone else then you're it, it's very difficult to break into those spaces so the fact that we're, we're having to negotiate in those spaces is something just, I think, that needs to happen. Without gross movies and TV combined oh, I know. In more than a decade. Do you remember your first video game role? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was uh, my first video game was uh, World of Warcraft. That was your first role? Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. My there first, you go. My first uh, 
video game role was that and my first um uh animation was family guy shit not a bad way <laughs> no <laughs> break in, no. Mate. And my first tv show i ever acted on was er so it's like oh wow right. <laughs> <laughs> i and, step in hard and then just stay it's just <laughs> And what, well, I'm curious, what, how do you feel your career is at this point? I mean, you've done so much stuff. You look back and go, I'm lucky, I'm proud. How do you look back at the yeah, moment? I am proud. I'm proud of the work that I've done. After I did Love, Death, and Robots, oh, yeah. uh, you know, in G.I. Joe, I was, I mean, this G.I. Joe, Renegades, oh, yeah. I, I wanted, um, I mean, I, I thought that show deserved an Emmy. It was wonderful. Oh. And Love, Death, and Robots you know, is Fincher and Tim Miller. So that was, you know, I'm very critical of my own work and I go back and I, I work it and I look at it and I analyze it and I go, I could have done better here, 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 here. But, um, you know, it's very Asian dad about me. Um, but uh, <laughs> Love, Death and Robots was the first one that I watched and I went, I got nothing. Like, great, solid, fantastic. That's that's exactly what it should have been. No critiques at all of yourself no, for that. None. Wow. No, not with Love and Death and Robots. First season? No. You know, first season is an immaculate piece that I'm so proud of, proud to be a part of. But overall with my career, it's been interesting because on camera, it's been a slog. It's been an effort because I'm uh I'm an Asian American actor, which means for the first because I really started making money in 2001, I want to say. Mm -hmm. So 2001, you know, one of the first commercial auditions I walked into, they said Here's your necktie. Here are your chopsticks. You're talking to that bear over there, <laughs> right? And it's like what? And half an hour later, I found myself singing on top of a table, singing "Sweet Caroline" in a terrible <laughs> Japanese accent. You know, what? and when you, you know, when you've done a semester at RADA and you're sitting there going "Sweet Caroline," suddenly you turn into Alan Rickman in, uh, in Galaxy <laughs> Quest, and you're just like. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> you know. When did so, you realize so you had so much vocal range? I'm curious because you can go anywhere with your voice. Oh, oh. yeah, no, I mean, I, I, but that's my dad. My dad's, my ah. dad started me doing voiceover because he was, he was the film, st film strip guy. So all the film strips that you grew up seeing with the Three Trees, Weston Woods, he worked at Spoken Arts before that. Oh wow! And he, you know. I think my first voiceover for that was, I was like eight. Oh, and I played God. Susie and the, the, my friend Alicia played the boy. I was like, how does that fly? So yeah. the fact that I was playing Susie, that's unacceptable. So yeah, but I did voiceover way back then. My dad's always been a man of a thousand voices. So I've just sort of taking, and, and he's, yeah, he's Yoda. So my dad just sort of like, he has a way of sort of placing a piece of advice and it like it's perfect oh wow and, and you just go oh i should do exactly what he says you know it's actually taken me years to because it, it is it's always such good advice it's always it's taken me years to figure out like oh but that's advice for someone else <laughs> not for me like i should give that to someone else and i'm not going to do that it's taken me years to sort of go get around that but i've heard uh, you say that they were traditional um parents right my parents yeah, yeah my, many... dad, my dad's a big old white boy um but he's very uh he's very northeast um uh, oldie timey blue blood i mean i'm i'm direct line related to benjamin franklin's sister so like that's like <laughs> i mean that's like only you know great great yeah. great great uh, uncle ben you know is is definitely a thing you know <laughs> you, we're we're austin tappan right like those are all the ones on my dad's side of the family my mom's side of the family is is um uh, is tan chinese but by way of india because uh. all of my, my family immigrated through india after the war so they went through india lived there for a bunch my mom was raised there so all of my relatives on my mom's side speak hindi as well so i grew up hearing chinese hindi spanish and english through them um oh, and wow. they're all like these hyper achievers so you know that's just so you fit in quite nicely yeah oh yeah they're like <laughs> <laughs> it's just dissatisfaction 
Going back to Liu Kang, uh, what was it like to, you know, romance Katana when, you know, Johnny Cage is trying? Uh, oh, it's so much fun. Everyone's oh, trying. You're the only fun. one that could get across the line. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm a god. <laughs> that's, that's all it takes, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, and I know <laughs> Kari really well. You know, oh, she's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, she Kari's really is. Come oh, on. what a what a pro! Come on, um, I've got some fan questions here, Matt, that we might fly sure. by if we can. I know we don't have you for long. Uh, dear Dan, have you noticed one of the hybrid characters in the last chapter is a fusion of Liu Kang and Kano? That was a hilarious accent, Matt. Oh, yeah. Is that you? Uh, my, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if it's if it's Australian, my Australian is terrible. You know, I you know I I start doing because isn't Kano Kano's Australian, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So as soon as I start doing Australian, it sounds like like a really bad Paul Hogan commercial. <laughs> You know, just like, oh, yeah, yeah. And it's like really like everything's nice, right? Nah. Like, oh, that's not bad. So I just like, I just stop. I don't, you know, just go up at the end. Everything sounds like you're smiling. Want to kill you? Right? It's just like, no. So you don't remember doing that one, but it could be you. Could be me. I don't. But I mean, literally last night I was watching it. There were like four cutscenes and mm. at least two endings. And I was like, I have no idea when I recorded it. Because it was like a two and a half, three year process. So like it's coming out now, but maybe what I'm watching, like I recorded two, like during COVID or before, you know, so I mean, because it's been a really long process. I mean, because yeah. right after 11 finished, we started on this, like neck, they, they were like, boom, boom. So, and you did it from home, right? Uh, some of it, but, yeah. but you know, when, when it when everything shut down, yeah, I did. Um, and you've got a home so there booth. There are a few of those that, that are obviously sound recordings from my closet. Um, <laughs> I can't. I can't. Tell. I'm actually gonna see, uh, see the guys. I haven't seen Dom in in person in over three years because he's always over Zoom, and you know, because as, as, as soon as it was shut down, Dom and I used to hang out at Warner Brothers. Now, nope. So it's, it's been, it's been a, it, it's a trip. It's a real trip, especially like when you're working on, you know, like when I did GI Joe, it was Kevin, Michael Richardson, myself, it was like, uh, um, Clancy Brown, like all of us would be in a room, Phil Lamar. Um, and oh, wow. now like, now like everybody's in their own booth in their own house. And there's this real sense of, Oh, you got your dog. Like, <laughs> I, I i hope in the if there is another one a sequel to this that possibly they look to do motion capture with all the actors because i know it's only FK? voice yeah it'd be nice it'd be nice just for, for face likeness although now with uh with ai they can do whatever the hell they want so no i mean more like yeah you know, i guess you there is the physicality to it i mean they do take some of your facial expressions oh, right? absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's a camera on, but i mean yeah you know, for instance if you look at like if you look at bruce lee bruce lee always had whenever he's talking he always has a slight sneer so everything comes when he talks there's always this pull on the side of his nose so everything comes from there you know and it's different because the, also Liu kang is a is about a half octave to an octave drop below bruce right because bruce is like do not look at the finger or you will miss all the heavenly glories, right? Like, and that's good. Like, you, put, <laughs> you know, you put water into a bottle, it becomes a bottle. You put water into a cup, it becomes a cup. Be like the nature of water, right? Like, he's he's a little bit harder on on what he's saying, but you know, if you take that Bruce Lee, like, be like the nature of water, and you drop it down, like, be like the nature of water. That's Luke. Hanks. Wow, there he is. Yeah. Shit, right, man. I, I could listen to you hours do voice. <laughs> I really, I seriously could, because I know you've got so many in the bag as well, so many characters you played. Like, oh yeah, Harry, there's a bunch he's coming. Like, like this completed. last year has been, uh, I've been going bigger and bigger and bigger, and uh, lots oh, of wow. people like the work that I did is both Splinter and Shredder, and so like I've, I've gotten a, a lot of play because of the those two roles and stuff like that so it's oh, dude your, your voice must be wrecked I'm, I'm after hoping, you know please bring it 
You know? <laughs> I got three kids, man. Like I'm barely keeping them in Cheerios. Like, Are they? You, do they watch your work? Do they play games? Oh, they every? love it. And my no. son's my my son's got the thing. He has no interest in the thing, but he's he's the best actor in the house. Oh wow! Really? Like he? Oh, Have he's you, so you told great. him this, obviously. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to blow up his ego and then ruin it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just. I like to try and, you know, I like to try and make it, build him up and then knock him down. It's like the Marines. <laughs> um, yeah. No, the, Parenting, like what my, I want. My eldest is a fantastic writer. She's got, she, she understands the chops. She understands it clearly. You know, she's like me. She's an overthinker though. So like, so it takes her a second. So, you know, my middle kid, she'll either get it or she won't get it. And if she gets it, it's perfect. If she doesn't get it, if she doesn't get it, it's like, no, never mind. Don't worry about it. If my my son every time he's like, it's like he just nails it every single time. He did an audition actually uh, about a week ago, um, because you know he's been coming to my voiceover agency. Like literally, I'd be holding him in the booth, right? So my voiceover agent would be like, "Hey, you have a baby? I just got a call for a baby. <laughs> you want to put him on? You know?" And I'd be like, "Yeah, sure." I mean, that's what the excuse. The funny thing is, that's what nepotism looks like, right? Like that's what that's what that's what an actual nepo baby is. Is my son in the booth? Um, but yeah, so she would call him. It was really funny. Like he was he was auditioning for something. He was listening to his sister go, and there was a line that was woohoo. It just said woohoo, and she kept on going woohoo, woohoo, and he and he's like, I want to say six at the time maybe five and he was like will you actually yell it's like <laughs> like you can do that and she, wow and she's what like, a smart him, and I'm like, what what he said <laughs> 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 yeah he, do, do what he said how old are they now uh i have a 14 year old and 11 year old and a nine year old oh wow yeah. as i said cheerios Ah, it's a Cheerios. Yeah. yeah, that's an interesting household at the moment. That's full oh, yeah. of energy. No, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> no, they're all they're all amazing. They're all absolutely amazing. Again, my father, right? My father said, love your children as the age they are. Right. And that's like, see? Yoda. Interesting. Yeah. What I'm trying to <laughs> what, 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 explain that to me. Well, the like if you it, <laughs> your child is a baby. And they're adorable and they're amazing. And just as you get fed up and can't take it anymore, they turn into a toddler and they have this incredible smile. And then you fall in love with the toddler and, and you're like, wow, this toddler is so cool. And just as you sort of get a handle on that, they turn into this child and that child is incredible questions and, and beautiful, amazing things. Um, and then just as they do that, then, uh, and I'm, by the way, I think I'm, par I, I think I'm, um, paraphrasing like modern families like but you know just as that child shows up then they then they turn into uh sort of a, a teenager right mm. and that teenager gives you attitude but you're also seeing the person they're going to become right and then very soon after that all of those children that you've fallen in love with walk out the door right all at once that's heartbreaking man. right <laughs> and, and so, right and so the thing is that you that that you have to do is you have to love them as the age they are right like when they're a teenager you don't love them as the baby right mm. just you always ate broccoli and you know that's doom yeah right? you have to yeah. let them tell you who yeah. they are when they are and i agree yeah you know one of the blessings of acting is i can just go okay what do you need what what dad do you need me to be right now for you? All right. All right can you, do you get uh, a lot of dad roles these days? Oh yeah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> and just naturally. Dad roles. You know, everything, <laughs> yeah. The, like Goldie Hawn once said, the three stages of women in Hollywood are you're an ingenue, you're a defense attorney, you're a crone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> with with I mean, granted, now it's changed, but but for me. It was, you know, it's been like, it, it's been, you're the best friend, you're a gang leader, you're a CEO, you're a martial arts sage, right? Like, that's sort of been what I've been looking at my art <laughs> as. Now it's weird. So like, I shouldn't I laugh, back, should I? I was, I was on Riverdale, oh. and like, when you got guys like Charlie Melton, you know, 
Charles Melton is one of the most handsome, ridiculously good looking human beings on the planet. Oh. And because I'm like, you didn't exist when I was coming in. Like guys <laughs> like you could not get you couldn't get hired anywhere. People would be like, I don't know what to do with you. You're mm. good looking and Asian. What are we gonna do with that? Right? Like it'd be very <laughs> much like uh so like Charles Melton, the, fa the fact that now suddenly like there's this range of like 16 to 28 to I'm going to say 35. I'm just going to, cause, cause that's how old Charlie was. Like I say like 16 to 35. It's like Asian men are now being himbos. Right. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> at what point did that happen? Like you got like, Ugh. baby, you got, you got Charles, you got all these different guys who are now absolute himbos. Right. And they're dunces. So I'm like, at what point did that become the icon of like like ah, Asians aren't smart they're himbos they're they're the dumbass good looking ones right like what you need to do comedy man you are so <laughs> funny you need to do more of it oh thank you I, I've been uh, I've, I've wanted to but but um see, here's the thing I'm oblivious right like and I think you have to be to succeed at any entertainment career Right. Like Chris Rock said, you have to, you know, leave the stage. Absolutely bomb. Like absolutely. People are throwing everything at you because you suck. Right. You absolutely bomb and you walk off stage and you kind of go, I think that went pretty well. Right. You just have to have that just cognitive <laughs> dissonance. But the thing is like, <laughs> but the thing is like, I went to an open mic because I was at NYU, I went to an open mic, like one of my first weeks yeah. at NYU. And I was like, open mic. And they were like, come up and do your stuff. And so I thought by stuff, you know, what they meant was come and do your comedy, right? It's like, And this was like the comedy <laughs> stuff or something like that. Like do your comedy. And I was like, no, I'm going to do my monologue that got me into college right oh, here. No. Like I'm just going <laughs> to come in and do my monologue. But my monologue <laughs> My oh, no. was about a kid trying to figure out whether or not he had AIDS. And, and so I, I just stood up in <laughs> front of a comedy club worth of people and just did a monologue about trying to figure out whether, you know, and just panicking and not knowing how my parents would take it. And just like, that was the whole monologue. And meanwhile, I'm just being heckled by this guy in the back who's just like, bring Chuchi on! Get Chuchi on the stage! And I'm like, who the? And I'm like, back in my head, I'm thinking like, who the hell is Chuchi? I'm doing my, don't you see I'm acting up here? And I finished, and I get like this. Oh my God. And I walk off the stage. And it was probably, I want to say years later. I want to say years. Mm. Before I was like, oh. Oh, I was supposed to do comedy. Oh, oh, my God. oh man. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Oh, like, that's a sense of dread. Is, like, two years later. Oh. Hey, that's just what happens. Like, I'm so oblivious. I'm like walking through bullets like it's the Matrix because I don't know any better. <laughs> I'm the baby from the Warner Brothers cartoon, just like crawling, and then the girder shows up and I'm on it. What am I going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's just. <laughs> but are you are you scarred from that now? No of embarrassment. No, no you're right. No, yeah. I live by the law of the raconteur, which is if it doesn't make a good story, why are you doing it? And so, like, yeah, exactly. the, the thing is, it makes a good story so great. Like, you know, I got one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> man, I even um even going back to you said you're doing shredder. I can't imagine that the stress that must put on those vocal cords of yours screaming all that oh, battle yeah. chatter for cod see the new version of Shredder oh. is like yeah and where i'm doing it is uh is brutality is yeah, brutality uh yeah <laughs> no, uh because because shredder is like i'm doing i'm doing shredder as ken watanabe from from last samurai right so ken watanabe had that you know good to meet you, very good to see you, right? But he has a very pleasant tone, right? And then I just like take Ken Watanabe's voice and I put it through a blender, 
where I'm just like, this is a guy who was burned and then like got stabbed in the throat and like he's just so like and he got mutagen poured on him and he's just this awful. is your process. That's my process of oh, shredder. And so like God. shredder is this like oh, turtle. You know, that's like, ah, everything is angry. So if I have to yell like that, oh good lord. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. But you got to find there's something this. redeeming about these characters, right? Yeah. Oh no, he, there's something redeeming about all of them. Right. Hitler was a vegetarian. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. With the you gotta comedy, find your man. Way in. Uh, oh fuck yeah! Find your way in. Yeah, yeah. No, Shredder's Shredder's wonderful, and I think villains are the best way. They're the story, right? If Lex Luthor doesn't blow up things, you yeah. don't. You know, you don't have Superman come in and hit the button, right? Like. Yeah, you know, so that's all a hero does. They fly in, they wait till the last second, and they go bam. Like that's their job, right? Just to do it on the thing. The villain has to hire people. You know, they've got an HR department. They got, you know, what was the? There's a Warner Brothers film that has brother blood in it, and like he comes up out of the floor, and there's like a gigantic thing, and then there's like leaves of blood falling behind him, and like all of the people are chanting. And all I could think was there's some guy backstage going and cue the leaves <laughs> in three, two, one. Cue leaves. Thank you. All right. Sher Sherry, Sherry, <laughs> Sherry, Sherry. I want a spot. I want a spot on blood. Spot on blood in three, two, one. Cue five. Cue six. And I was just like, because like, that's the thing. It's like, <laughs> there's obviously... <laughs> Yeah, there's, so, there's obviously somebody who's there like you know they had to have a meeting about the logo right like mm, what do you think is it too bloody is it too <laughs> does it say well, I mean is it too on the nose does the B with the drips uh, is that really what does that say to you it said mm. uh, Matt it's been a pleasure mate is there anything you want to say to the Mortal Kombat fans or fan of, fans of your work over the years. um please come check me out wherever you can find me mk1 uh right now go back and give cyberpunk 2077 a chance yes. i yes. promise you when we're having a big emotional scene there is no one floating at the ceiling <laughs> doing that anymore it doesn't they, they fixed it they fixed uh, it it's all good <laughs> um they're even arm blades it's awesome you can beat people to death with a giant dildo what more do you want wow. from a video game? Yeah. um Oh yeah, yeah. Sir Phallus a lot. Something I don't know what it's called. Are you talking from experience of your oh, gameplay? No, this is something you can no, <laughs> no like not in real life. No, in no, I mean, is this how you just played Cyberpunk? Game. Is this how you played Cyberpunk? I'm saying. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, yeah. So go watch Cyberpunk 2077. Come and play me on Matt's gonna play. Uh, and otherwise I'll be showing up. Uh, you can watch me in Elemental right now, well, which oh, is nice. out and, yep. uh, and not quite Narwhal if you got itty bitty babies, um, which is one of the most cute shows I've ever been in. And I'm, I'm both the dad in Cups and, and, uh, Krabby and it's just, it's a, it's a fun little awesome. place to be. Yeah. And, uh, before I let you go, can, can Liu Kang say anything to Dan? Yeah, what do you want? To, what do you want to hear, Dan? Something inspirational, something motivating for me. From something motivational for you. All right, yeah. Liu Kang. All right, Liu Kang, giving Dan a <laughs> motivational. Uh, all right, all right, Dan. In all of the multiverse, I have created many people, but I have created you to bring voice to the masses. To bring questions to the unquestionable. I have brought you here with my godly powers to do a podcast. So podcast away, my friend. Strike clear and true. There you go. Oh man, thank you very much. That is You're awesome. Welcome, yeah. I'm gonna have to put that in my promo now. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Excellent. Bro. Have a great day, mate. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to doing this again. Thank you much, man. Anytime. <clears throat>